I was always into the more obvious cars, BMWs, Porsches, Ferraris, and you know, I call them obvious, but in not a, in a negative way because they have a reputation that they deserve. The, the positive reputation that they have is very well earned. Alfa Romeo, for whatever reason, whether it's poor marketing or or whatever, has always been kind of a redheaded stepchild um, in the automotive world. And I didn't really discover the mark in a true sense until I think I was 20 or so when I. Uh, got my first Alfa Romeo, which was a, uh, an 86 Spider. And naturally, as with anything, if I get a new toy or if I discover a new hobby, etc., I kind of get obsessed and I want to know as much about it as possible. So just as I start to dig into the history of Alfa Romeo and look at the rich lineage that it has in models and people who raced for it and things like that, it just blew my mind. I said, how the hell did I not know about Alfa Romeo before this? So I just fell in love with, with what the mark stands for in its rich heritage. It's got a storied past, you know, it was on the brink of failure many times in its history and always getting saved somehow. And uh, the variety of designs and designers that were involved with various uh, models, you know, all the top design houses from Zagato to Pininfarina to Bertone to Ghia, et cetera, they've all had some very interesting Alfa Romeos that they've designed. It was like discovering this whole world that I felt, you know, silly for not having known about it before. After that 86 Spider, unfortunately, I, I ended up getting a bunch of new cars as leases because that's what was advantageous for me at the time because of, uh, because of my business, etc. But I always missed having a vintage car. So the SS was my re-entry into the vintage car world again, back when I got it in 2009. From there, it went downhill very fast. Actually, right before I got the SS, I had gotten the 8C, so that was my first Alpha after the Spider, not having had uh, an Alpha for a while. And shortly after the SS, the Giulietta Spider popped up on the Alpha bulletin board. It was some guy in Florida who was selling it. It looked really good, and it was the first time that I ever bought a car sight unseen. I just crossed my fingers, wired the money, and hoped that the car would arrive, and hoped that it would be at least somewhat uh, true to the description. And uh, mechanically, it was not true to the description. So the engine needed a complete rebuild. But the car otherwise turned out to be really wonderful. It's a very early model. One of my two favorite color combinations, white with red inside, the other one being the, uh, the very light blue. And so after that, it just, you know, I thought I was done after having two vintage alphas and a, and a modern one. And, uh, and that's when I met my friend Manuel with his huge warehouse of, you know, 80 to 100 alphas that he can't even keep track of. And that introduced me to a world that I didn't even think was possible. And so <laughs> he made it seem like, okay, well, if you got two, you can have four, et cetera. So, <laughs> so I blame him for having a dozen alphas. So back when I was uh, obsessed with my 86 Spider and I was, you know, reading up on Alfa Romeo models and all that stuff, I came across the SS, and uh, there are so many beautiful Alpha models out there, but the SS really struck a chord with me. And to me, it looked like something, like a concept car that you see in a show that, and you love, fall in love with, but it never makes it to production. And I couldn't believe that this was a car that somebody actually made uh, a street version of and you know, made it into production. And then I remember seeing it in the flesh for the first time, I think in 99, when I was at a Concours and uh, I was just like blown away by the shape and just the aerodynamic look that it has and so forth. So I started to just browse classifieds for it online and for literally seven years, I would just occasionally, like on a weekly basis, look to see what's out there. And uh, for the longest time, the, the prices were just remain flat. And then all of a sudden I started noticing they're 
prices are starting to go up, and that's when I said, I should get one before they get really expensive. And I still got it out really early enough, and um, I got in the color I wanted. I, I was really looking for either a white or a gray or silver, because I thought that really shows off the shape the best. And that's how I got it. I was obsessed with it for like seven years before actually pulling the trigger and buying one. So I always kind of half jokingly say, you don't pick an alpha, the alpha picks you. And I think in the majority of the alphas that I have, that was actually true. I wasn't really looking for my Julieta Spider when I bought it. I wasn't looking for the green uh, GTV when I bought it. I wasn't looking for uh, the Berlina when I bought it. I was looking for the SS, I did look for the 8C. So those were different. I did look for the Okra Yellow uh, GTV, but the rest of the cases, I think the Alphas found me. They pop up and you fall in love with the color or you fall in love with, I don't know, that particular model, something about it. Or in some cases, your friend eggs you on and kind of convinces you to buy it. <laughs> I'm Afshin Benia, and I have an Alfa Romeo problem. <laughs>